Music has the ability to empower, to inspire, and even create social change. And today's guest is gonna show us how he transformed his drive and passion on the basketball court to become an unstoppable force on the microphone. But first, having to teach himself how to speak English. Welcome to Havilland Friends. I'm your host, Havilland Malone, and every week I bring you inside my amazing world of mindfulness teachers, inspirational speakers, business experts, celebrities, and so much more to have a conversations that matter to you. And today's guest is a Brooklyn-based hip hop and Afrobeat artist who has been featured on stages around the world, including the Essence Festival stage and has performed with artists like Mob Deep and DJ Premier. And when he's not, out there performing, he's actually giving back to the community through youth empowerment programs to be able to teach hip hop workshops in some of Brooklyn's toughest schools. Please welcome my good friend, Napoleon the Legend. Welcome. How you doing? I have a pleasure to be with you talking today with the people, you know? I am so excited to have you on. I remember us meeting at Essence Festival right. back, I think in like 2017. And you know, not only the, the your skill set and your music, but you as a human being, like you were just so, you know, authentic and approachable and like just really an amazing person. I'm so glad that over the years we've been able to stay, you know, connected because you've been doing some extraordinary things. I mean, you literally use your voice uh, you you call it a weapon but a weapon of hope and social critique and joy and that's pretty significant uh, but your journey actually started because you are Paris born you were born in Paris you were then brought to the Comoros Islands and then raised in Washington so I want you to talk a little bit about that journey because in your career and as you moved on you literally had to teach yourself how to speak english <laughs> so like how did you do that well like when we first um growing growing up in, in france like like just being a child actually I, I i i we left when i was like four years old so coming to america uh m my father was speaking english but like the rest of the, the family at home, we was we just speaking French and, and they were speaking Comorian, which is a form of Swahili. So it was like a big culture shock. Like we, we and we had a lot of like a little community of French speaking, like Africans and other people that were that were living in that the Maryland DC area at the time. So just watching a lot of TV and 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 also like I, I was in a school where it was it, it was like an international school, so there was a lot of international students. There were English classes, so you know I had to take those serious. But there was still some people lagging. But I honestly listening to hip hop and listening to music actually taught me a lot of the language. A lot of people thought I was from New York and still think I'm from New York because I used to listen to a lot of New York hip hop. So I used to speak with a lot of slang and everything like that. And I just, you know, at, at, at being in America, then started to make friends and everything. It started flowing more smoothly and naturally. Nice. So the very so thing that actually inspired you was a thing that you ended up embracing and taking on as a career path in life. Yeah. Hip hop educated me in a lot, in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways. Mm. And so I know a little bit in your journey, you had like a, a love of basketball and was on the basketball court all the time. And so, you know, you would think naturally, okay, I'm going to pursue this path, you know, and, and go down a sports career, but you made this transition into music and into hip hop. I mean, so what inspired that change in, in, in career choices, really? Well, basketball is like was like a love story it's kind of like loving basketball because it was something i was so passionate about and i was doing all the time for fun and with my friends and competitively i ended up playing aau for dunbar dc i was going to doc's gym in murray high school and played with people like alan Iverson, uh norris Mucci, a lot of local stars that were playing like uh on their off season so i i got very skillful but at the same time it left me heartbroken see i'm not the I'm I'm not a tall guy, you know what I'm saying? So I was already going against the odds, playing against these giants. And um, it was a time where, like, I hurt my ankle, and 
my dreams of playing like in college and doing and going that route kind of ended. And I knew it was like, it was, sometimes you just gotta be like, you know, I, I loved it, I left it behind, but at the same time, music, like kind of, I was able to channel that heartbreak and that, that pain into something else that I loved. So mm -hmm. basketball taught me work ethic, had to, how to work as a team, had to be relentless, had to be fearless. I learned that from sports and I learned that from basketball and all the people I've met throughout that time and all the good relationships that I still foster. But hip hop was like an easy or it, it was it was the it was a transition that helped me through not being able, able to pursue my hoop dreams, which I had. Mm. And I love that you say that it became like this art form or it really it sounds like almost like a therapy to be able to express all of the feelings that were inside that had come through the heartbreak of, of not being able to pursue this path that you originally loved. But now I can, you know, move this energy through me and like spit these bars or like, you know, like sing this hook or whatever and, and, and put that out into the world and still find fulfillment and joy, which I I think is very encouraging for people that just because one path doesn't pan out for you doesn't mean there's another one that could be just as equally fulfilling and may you know be able to help bring you that fulfillment and joy that you want in your life and use your skill set to the fullest so thank you for that and and speaking of because you have performed on stages around the world and I'm even curious like what has been the most like unbelievable or like even exciting experience that you've had as an artist so far like where somebody would be like what like <laughs> well it, it was um there's several yeah the essence festival when I met you was, was one of them but for this I, I would say um it was um I just remember uh in 2017, before the Essence Festival, actually, um, I did my first European tour. That it was independently booked. Uh, uh, this company called Underground Love with Architect Me just like booked 13 shows for me. So every night we were going to a different city in Europe. You know, we'd go somewhere, then we take a bus, or we take a flight, or we take a train, and it was very grueling. But like you felt the love. A lot of people weren't even, you know. Some people didn't understand the language, but they were like so hyped to just see the art form in the flesh like that. And I got went back to America at the end of the tour after 13 shows. And uh, I get a phone call. Uh, it was on my birthday on March 1st in the morning, like probably a day or two after I got back. And this big festival in France called Hip Hop Session Festival uh, gets me up and tell me tells me if I if I'm willing to go perform on like five days later. So I had just gone from a whole, grueling tour and not that I would but I was tired. I was exhausted. You know, I've been traveling, I got jet lag. But now I'm about the same day I hopped on a plane back to France, you know, to Paris, then had to take a train back to Nantes for that festival, which was the grand finale, I think. J. Rue, the Damager, the Beat Nuts, uh, Odyssey, Black Milk. A lot of people were performing on that stage. And I had uh, hours set all by myself. And I did this song called um, African in New York, which is a remake of Englishman in New York from, from Sting. And also there's a song called Jamaican in New York. And just to have the place was packed. It was like, I don't know, about 3,000 people. And for all of them to sing, uh, you know, oh, I'm an alien, I'm a legal alien, yeah. I'm an African in New York. It just, it was just mind blowing for me. Just, just uh, how, how all these things connected into that moment where I had like the whole room sing like that. It just really, it was something else. I, I realized if you do something right, and it, it, if you create art, and art's not only music or painting, it just could be an experience between me and you. It could be if you're helping somebody, but if you're doing with inspiration, it could lead to incredible magical moments all the time. Mm, you're so right. Incredible magical moments. 
especially when you're in alignment with your like purpose and using your gifts for greater good, then so much can come out of that. But, you know, even as being an artist, you know, as many magical moments as are as there are, there's also, I'm sure, some extreme challenges that are faced along that path. And so what have been some of the, the most challenging things that you've had to, you know, encounter or face as an artist? There's, there's several. The one thing is that initially when you start anything in life, I think you, you get that initial enthusiasm and, and it's easy, but to keep doing something consistently and consistently, you'll realize that you have to really want it because a lot of people start things and then they, they give up. Sometimes it's okay to give up. You know, I had to give up basketball because there wasn't a path for me, but you have to know when to, you have to keep going because especially in music, you're going to go through rejection. People are going to be like, you're going to reach out to some people to perform here or reach out to some people to get interviewed here. And they're going to be like, no, or we can, or we don't know who you are, or this is not the style we like. You're going to hear a lot of no's, you know, and um, probably more than some yeses. But I saw that as I kept working on my craft, and, th and that's the thing with me. I worked on my craft like I worked on basketball. If in basketball, I was practicing every day, maybe get a day of rest if I wasn't feeling right, but mostly every day. This is how I do with music. And I realized that no's started turning into yeses. And, and, and that one yes could outweigh a thousand no's without, mm -hmm. without any question. So working on your craft and believing in what you're doing and, and, and seeing the long, you know, having a long-term vision about where you're going, it makes it easier to deal with the no's. Also, as an artist, financially, when you, you're just sustaining yourself just through your art, it's a lot of ups and downs. It's the entrepreneurial life. You're your Absolutely. own business and you have to treat yourself like the product and you have to treat yourself like the business. So you have to be very smart as to what you're putting your money into, what's worth it, what's not worth it. And again, have a long-term vision because look, you could try to go for the slam dunk and invest it in something huge. And if it doesn't have any returns, you might, you might be in a really bad position. Whereas if, if, if you just go step by step, every six months, you're going to see the progression of where you're going. So I just say have a game plan and, and able to weather the storm. But financially, it was hard. I took a risk. I, w I grew up in, in uh, Washington, D.C., Maryland. My career was going nowhere, right? I was, mm -hmm. I was rapping. At that time, I even had a song with Raekwon of the Wu-Tang Clan. I was doing my thing. I thought that was going to change everything. And it did. A lot of people knew my name, but not, not as much as I thought so. And I realized that, you know what? I'm in the wrong place. I have to, and, and, and I, I had an idea for somebody who was like, you should be in New York. And I'm like, why didn't I think about that before? And I just decided to come up with a game plan and I moved to New York. I moved to Brooklyn. And uh, that was rough with this transition and everything. But look at me years later, it's the best thing I ever did. So I, I took challenges and, and, and everything in stride. And, and I wasn't able, I wasn't afraid to always invest in myself and take risks on myself. If you really believe in yourself, you're going to make these moves. Absolutely. I love that. Because sometimes we do, you may have to be very skilled. You know, you, you come up on great opportunities, but sometimes it could be something as simple as your location that right. needs to shift and change for you to be able to be in an environment that's conducive to what you're trying to produce and what you're trying to do. So sometimes we have to move outside of that comfort zone, take that leap of faith and do that thing that we keep getting in like the back of our mind, like that little voice is like, you know, it's time for you to go on, it's time for you to move, it's time for you to go and, and, and really believe in ourselves enough and come up with a game plan that will help us to be successful and kind of weather the challenges along that path because it's not like okay hey i make this leap and then boom everything's perfect <laughs> you know right, it's all right. of that unfolding journey so thank you so much for sharing that and i also want you to touch on like what's one like misconception that people have about hip-hop artists 
they have a, a million misconceptions about <laughs> hip hop artists. And I realized that even growing up when I was young, like even at school, when I started uh, rapping with my friends and we would have the shows and it was like talent shows right at school. And people were doing, uh, they had bands, different music genres and stuff like that. But we were known as the rappers. And it always, I always felt a little something in my gut when they called us the rappers because for some reason it, it just felt, I, don't, I can't explain it. It just felt a little bit like we were apart like we were a little lesser. And I think it has to do a lot with uh, people's perceptions, like you said, that a rapper is a hoodlum, uneducated, maybe maybe simple and dumb and slow. You know what I'm saying? And there's, there's still a lot of that going on. And because a lot of what the and mainstream images uh, that's being thrown out there and that's, that's, that's staying in our subconscious is leading people to think that's what rap and that's what hip hop is. Hip hop is a huge thing. There is some hip hop that's pretty much just to have fun and like, you, you know, doesn't require brain power. There's some hip hop that's the opposite. There's a hip hop that could be educated. There's a hip hop that, that could lift your soul up. You know, you can listen to uh, like a Lauryn Hills album for some, that that's hip hop. Yeah. Well, you could listen to the Yin Yang Twins if you want to go to a club and, and, and you know do something. That there's something for everybody. But if you're gonna pitch a hole, we're still artists. We're still people making that this art, and everybody do, doesn't have the same um, the same outlook on life and the same vision. Me as an artist, I wanna I wanna like elevate the collective consciousness of the people. I think this is time. I think we're at the brink, and people kind of look at you crazy. Sometimes when you put these ideas out, but I think it's, 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 it's civilization is going to change and has to change, right? There's a lot of us spreading great information like you, like about all this great information. Not everybody is getting it and maybe not everybody is like uh, privy to it, but it's time for it because the world, the growth of the economy keeps going up around the world as a whole. You know what I'm saying? There's some good parts and bad parts but not a lot of us are benefiting from that. Not a lot of us. I see it all around me. I see some, a lot of some of my friends having keep, uh, trouble keeping up to where their parents were, you know, growing up or where their mom or where their dad were and they're struggling. And I think it's, um, so everything needs to be kind of rethought. And through my music, I just want to, I, I want to show people that there's a collective consciousness out there and we, should be able to rethink this whole paradigm, break it and create a new one. And it's people like you, such as yourself, spreading that good information and through your art, through how you help people, how you, um, how you connect with the youth also, they're very important. Amen. And you know, we can't, we can't be stuck in, in, in a system that's not benefiting everybody. And that takes such a big shift in mindset. And, you know, and I, and I love that you use your music and your artistry to be able to do that um, because you could talk about anything, but when you are able to help people to see the world in a different way, see themselves and the power they possess in a different way, it does help to elevate that level of consciousness. And we are on the brink of a big change. So <laughs> it's like people, you either get on the train or you're going to get left behind. Right, right. right. <laughs> Right, and we mm -hmm. want to take every everybody needs to come. Like you know, we're 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 stronger together, and we're stronger with that unified consciousness. And uh, it's 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 really time for for people to think it's possible and not sit back. Make a little effort. Put it on you because I know we're always looking up for somebody to save us. No, you know, you're not. You know, nobody's just gonna take you. Come to your house or wherever you at. Take you by the hand and take you and take you out of your problems. Do it yourself. And come with us and join, and it's going to get easier as we all think like that. Lord, thank you for sharing that. I, I'm such a huge proponent of you become your own savior, which is why my whole be proof of what's possible movement is so important and so impactful because we have the ability to do, to accomplish, to be anything we set our minds to. We have that power already. So you got to step up and, and you have an actually really powerful movement that you have instituted. Um, there's a song about it. There's all kind of, you know, pieces and components with this and it's called Black privilege. So I want you to share with everybody, what is Black privilege all about? 
Well, black privilege is uh, was a, a thought and an idea that 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 came that came to mind as I was talking with a friend um, when I made I was making this project called Still This Mixtape, and uh, basically, when people think of black privilege, some people right away it's like they feel empowered. Some people get frightened. You know, it's 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 a it's a very charged kind of uh, term, but it's just a concept. And basically what it is, is white privilege in this society, the way, you know, people have talked about it, is something that you've given since birth and you benefit from. There's all types of privileges. You have a privilege when you're tall. You know, maybe if I had an extra foot, maybe I would have been in the NBA, but I don't have that privilege. There's a privilege if, if, if you're smart, if you look good, if you're educated, if you're born in a, in a good area. Black privilege is the opposite of all these privileges because it's the privilege that you earn until you give yourself. So by having discipline, by working on something, by not giving up, by having the strengthening your character, by putting yourself, facing your fears and pu putting yourself through obstacles, you get better. And it, that's something that you control 100%. And that's what I call black privilege. So it's not a race thing. If, 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 you know, if, if you're white and you're thinking, oh, I haven't been able to cash in on my white privilege, well, get yourself some black privilege and you, you have some already, you might not know. But I think it's something for all of us to develop and all of us to be conscious of and, and give, give, you, give yourself the strength, like, like you said. Look, in music, when, when you said be your own savior, it's the same thing, a lot of artists, kind of like a wishing on a star. And I believe on, on thinking big and, and visualizing, but they, they, they imagine somebody gonna find them and gonna put them where they're at. And I, I'm here to tell you, that's not gonna happen. So, so, so just throw it out of your brain, make your art. It's, it, it's, it's easier than ever with technology, with everything that's around. Get yourself a microphone, get yourself a laptop, make some beats and record yourself and put it out there. You can put your music on Spotify. You can put your music here and there and create a game plan, create a marketing plan, promote yourself, build your own platform, you know? And at that point, people will start noticing you. I'm going on tours on my own accord. I'm about to go in June. I'm about to go back to Switzerland. I'm about to go back to France. I don't have a booking agent. I have none of that. People call me and because on the strength of them finding my work, so at, at what I'm trying to tell artists, start the right way and, 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 and empower yourself. And then I'm pretty sure people are gonna find you, all types of people, you know what I'm saying? But don't start with that thought at first. You know, you gotta, you gotta build it first. Building there will come. Yes, so through that self-determination, through you putting forth your own effort, then people start to take notice. And then they're like, hey, I wanna work with that person because I see right. their work ethic. I see that they're out there you know, on their grind and performing at a level of excellence and really pushing, we could do something together. And it really right. makes you a lot more appealing to whether it's for publicity opportunities, it's to get booked as an artist, it's to you know, get with a publishing company, people are looking to see what you've done first and what you can bring to the table before they're going to put their money behind you. So right. I think it's some great advice. Um, and, and two, I want you to talk a little bit about your style of, um, of artistry and like what have been some of your influences? Well, artistically, I'm a lyricist. I like, I like wordplay and I, I like to have intricate rhymes, but I like to make them really simple and understandable at the same time. I don't like to I don't like to go too far where you're like I, I, I'm not even knowing what he's saying because it's too complicated. I like I want to I want to communicate emotions and convey pictures and tell stories. So that's what I do through my music, and I do it through hip hop, and I also do it through Afrobeat because what and I kind of blend it too. And what I always wanted to do is I'm a hip hop head to the core but I also have African influences. I, I listen to a lot of African music. I listen to Zao, I listen to Tikanja Fakali. I listen to a lot of reggae artists, you know, back from the Bob Marley days to the Buju Bantans and the Sizzlers. So I put all that together with some of the, I grew up with a lot of like groups like Tribe Called Quest. Recently we've been hearing about Wu-Tang Clan a lot with their new documentary. 
all these people really influenced me. There's too many to name. And uh, I'm like a, a gumbo, like, you know, shout out to New Orleans, like a good gumbo, all those flavors. <laughs> and they're all, they all marinated inside my brain. And I, I just, you know, filter it through my own life experiences. So you're going to have a lot of different, um, you're not just, I'm not just one note. You're going to have some songs where I'm very emotional. You're going to have some music where I'm just having fun. You know, a lot of Afrobeat stuff that's hot tempo. You could dance to, you could play at a club. So you're going to get a lot of different sounds from me. I'm, 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 I don't like to pigeonhole myself. It's not fun. I know that's right. And I know this is like totally unplanned, but I, I don't know. I just feel like you're, you're ready for it anyways. Just spit a couple lines for us. And oh, okay. Lessons, lessons uh, with some artistry. <laughs> yo, uh, uh, yo, um, she's an undercover freak. Under the covers, Scully King, McGilly Cuddy, Gorilla Cutter, coming, I'm coming, coming to get it. Kind of linguist, a kind of linguist, stomach elixir for the night when I'm coming to hit it. Butterflies in the stomach, you feel it, stomach. I feel it under the illness, and I paint it with colors acrylic. <laughs> so, a little something for y'all, man. <laughs> nice, thank you. And, and you know, I have one last question for you. What, you know, as an artist, because I know you have, like, you've accomplished so much in your career so far, and there's right. still things that you, you know, are looking to accomplish. What, as an artist and even as a human being, what does success look like for you? When will uh, you know or be able to say, like, yep, I made it. That's it. We're here. It's right. Um, there's, there's several. Success, it changes through time. But I want to have peace of mind, be, be able to, like, sleep at night and know that I really stand by the art that I do. And, and and it's it's really it, it really coincides with how I feel at the moment, you know. That that's one thing artistically. Financial freedom is another one. So I could be able to sit back and it helps with my peace, you know, because I wanna be able to um to just be to be in a space where I could really be as creative as I wanna be without having life get in the way of that. Because sometimes it's difficult, things happen, you know. So that, that's part of success, I, I, being able to take care of me and my family. And uh, ultimately, I want to be able to reach that kid in Africa that has never left, uh, leave, left his village or his city and be able to hear my music and catch a vibe from it and be like, yo, look, this guy, you know, his parents are from the Comoros. Comoros, if you haven't heard of it, it's like a, a third world country. It, it's, it's not that, it wasn't that developed. It's starting to become more developed. But I, for a long time, it was the poorest country in the world. I don't keep track of that, so I don't know about now. I hope they, they got out of it. But it's, it, it, it's for people like that, for anybody, for, for, for the kid in Brooklyn, you know, and, and, and some of these schools in Brownsville that, that we go teach, or in Rikers Island that's in jail for, you know, stealing a book bag like, Khalif Brada, rest in peace, to listen to my music and to be like, you know, don't, hip hop could work for you. If, if you listen to it wrong, it could ruin your life. You know, just build yourself up, man. Build yourself up. And not just, I said man, but you know, for, for girls, for everybody, this is, this is a, a message of just inspiration. And if I could inspire the youth to do better and to strive for better and to, to join us in this new collective consciousness and elevation, I feel great about myself. Amen. Thank you so much. And please tell everybody where they can get this inspiring music, whether they're ready to, you know, bring their mind to another level, where they're party in the club. <laughs> right, I mean, right. get in touch with you uh, as well as get their hands on your music. Uh, you could go to Napoleon D A Legend, Napoleon D A Legend dot com and you could get all my music there i put out several projects whether you like to listen to it digitally see these vinyls you could also follow me on instagram at team ndl where not only will you be able to see my new music but i might speak to you in my stories or you know we could always share and interact and on facebook napoleon the legend and uh yeah you could get everything there and look out for tours and shows because I perform all, all over the place, you know? Awesome. That's what I'm talking about. So make sure that you go and check him out at napoleondelegend.com.
www.thrivingmoms.com. And we know when we share our stories, we get to live, to learn, and love a little bit more. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Haviland Friends. I'm your host, Haviland Malone, and make sure that you stay up with us every week by following on YouTube and liking us on Facebook. And I can't wait to see you next week.